so before making this video, I had another idea in mind. But as I was roaming through the idea, I kept reverting back to one specific topic. Of which you guys have probably already read, you know, as the title, d d depending on where you look. Anyway, the further in I went, the more I was like, you know what, I'd rather talk about that because it has a lot more delved into it. That being said, let's get started. Hey guys, my name is Dave, and welcome to another video. So, the stages of psychosocial development is one of many psychological um, studies and sociological studies that had been presented. One that I've always found very interesting, very relatable on multiple levels. So, how is this the case? Well, let's start with stage one of the stages. Infancy, where you're going through trust versus mistrust. Now, when the presenter came up with the ideas for this, it made a lot of sense. The person who, by the way, for those who don't know, the person who came up with the stages of psychosocial development, I'm just going to call it, start calling it SOP D just for short, <laughs> but his name was Eric Erickson. Um, when he came up with these, I don't remember exactly what he was going through, and I'm not going to try to speculate or try to say false fact. I'm just going to say as it is. I don't remember, but I do remember learning about it and thinking, it's interesting. But either way, his first of all the phases, of eight of them, is infancy. Trust versus mistrust. It's very interesting that this is the first because this becomes a big problem throughout life in general. Uh, for the same reason, too. I get why trust versus mistrust would be the first because, you know, whoever is raising the baby, whether it's a custodial parent, a guardian, a legal guardian, or just a generic parent, um, one way or the other, I have noticed that the trust versus mistrust aspect lies on how those parents treat the child. And if they do it poorly, if they don't take care of them properly, mistrust clicks in like that fast. This is kind of infancy is like the one point in time where it's that's where you start, but that lingers throughout your entire life. In fact, infancy, one thing I've noticed is infancy has a tendency to be one of the core reasons why a lot of people become introverts. Um, it's not particularly the reason I am, but at the same time, it is. It has nothing to do with my parents. It's It more has to do with the idea that I met people throughout my life who would impact that trust versus mistrust aspect. Those of you who have been on the channel long enough probably know about this as well. Um, if not, that is okay. Let's just say I've gone through enough hell in my life. Um, pardon the language, but, you know, eh, who, who are we kidding? Eh. I've gone through enough in my life where that trust versus mistrust aspect kind of will still click in every now and then. A good example of what I mean by this, like why it would still click in nowadays, many people can relate to this, but try the trust or mistrust within like a doctor or a therapist. There are many, and I mean many individuals on this planet who don't trust doctors or therapists. They have, everyone has their own personal reason for this, um, but it all has a tendency to core back to that infancy stage. It's very interesting to think about in my mind. Now, does it apply all the time? No, no. If it's a few mistakes, but for the most part the person's good, then trust is implemented instead of mistrust. But if it's constant wrong choices and hate or mis misbehavior or mis like bad actions, that's where the mistrust kind of kicks in. I'm going to go cross-legged on my chair because that's normal. Anyway, that's kind of the infancy stage of this. Those are my thoughts on that, too. Let's talk about the next stage now. Early childhood. Where the stage focuses on autonomy versus shame and doubt. It's very interesting because... This is basically a simpler way to put this. 
it's basically the idea of pre you're presenting this the mindset is presenting itself with either you have the idea of you'll be doubting yourself or you'll be going i know this is right in fact the stage of early childhood sticks around throughout any kind of schooling you ever do or any decision you make in general just on the decision on its own which kind of does link into its next stage which for some reason it, it takes place during preschool for those so it does the early childhood doesn't take very long that's why i say it connects into the preschool uh, part of a child's a, a person's life where initiative versus guilt is presented initiative versus guilt and autonomy versus doubt i'm just gonna say doubt instead of both shame and doubt because it's they connect in a way one is the deciding factor of the original choice the other one the following one afterwards links more to the outcome and how you feel about that outcome a good example and this it connects for the rest of someone's life as well every choice someone makes starts with that autonomy versus shame and doubt section say someone decides to go build a farm and they decide to grow a bunch of different you know fruits vegetables stuff like that they have a lot of food more than they need and there's some people who live in the neighborhood who are very who, who are very much in need of this kind of food the person has a choice they can either provide the food to them or keep it to themselves well knowing that the individuals need it now depending on whether the individual has the mindset of they're used to being self-centered let's say they're not we'll go down that path say this person has extremely good morals they're never self-centered and they always want to help others the autonomy part would kick in if they were to give it to them if they weren't they'd feel a little bit shameful at first but the guilt that's the outcome initiative versus guilt in the same scenario say the person gives them the food they would get the mental feeling of success of achievement achievement unlocked kind of thing if they didn't at the time when it starts the reaction they'd be like eh. Sh the shame and doubt would be slightly there but the guilt not quite it wouldn't be until the response to their actions the well in this case let's just say the family finds out and they decide to yes this is horrible but it's just hypothetical they just the family who's poor decides to rob the man or woman whoever it is of their personal items and somehow got away with it for some weird reason well at that point the guy would either feel guilty about what he did she or he did or they would take initiative and go i need to act on this response go to the police in that case they wouldn't get away with it but i guess the point of that is just that's where kind of the difference between the two is one is the action the other is just the follow-up this is kind of an interesting aspect to think about too it's kind of the way a story seems to drive a lot of its um, interests from most of the time when someone does write or tell a story there will be like an action and then a opposite and equal reaction kind of like Newton's laws but in a more metaphorical sense well why don't we move on to the next section 
My mind went blank for a sec. You're probably going to see a very big cut there because I had to look this up because for some reason my brain decided pfft, farting is a good idea. Anyway, next up, school age. Or should I say in industry versus inferiority. This is kind of the point in a person's life where, you know, kids be kids. They act up. They don't. They'll be good. They'll be bad. They're learning. I mean, it's kind of as simple as that. You go through stuff like that. Everyone knows how a kid is. Every kid is a little bit different from the last, but one common trope that a lot of them have is that aspect. All of them are learning. All of them are learning how they need to act. But I guess... I don't know. As a whole... It's one of those things that's really hard to just talk about, I guess. Because there's not much to say about that particular phase. The next one, though... The next two phases, that those are the most talked about. So, as short as that last one is, let's get to the next. Adolescence, or identity versus role confusion. There are so many people on this planet that I've met who struggle with what they need to be, who they are. Some people have an even longer time of trying to find out who they are to the point where they end up like skipping parts of their lives without really realizing it. This is the stage of adolescence. Some people f lose their identity and don't really know what to do with themselves over time. What an identity crisis is, that's like a later a later in life version of an identity uh, of an adolescent stage. I can't speak right now. But it can be tragic or it can be fun. It can be stressful. Or it can be desirable. It really depends on the path that someone goes. And when they experience this. A good example that a lot of people know of. I'm not going to put out names because there are several who go through this. But celebrities. Many celebrities go through an identity crisis in their life. Much far beyond the stage of adolescence. That's because they didn't really get to live, for the most part. When they finally do, they have to figure out exactly who they are, what they want to be. I, I'm not going to lie, up until about maybe four or five years ago, I was kind of stuck in that stage. It wasn't until I really started this channel um, where I kind of came to terms on that front, and... It's just something to really consider, but at the same time is very hard to do. And then, the one that a lot of people dread because of so many outcomes that are just shunned, young adulthood, or intimacy versus isolation. A lot of people suffer through depression, anxiety, or some kind of stress-related disorder. Why? Depends on the person. Quite frankly, I'm not surprised that the terms put together were intimacy and isolation. The two, those were the two compared. Because a lot of people, when people isolate themselves, it's usually the outcome of somebody being intimate, but in a way that's unwanted. That's where the isolation part comes in. I think that's why that particular comparison exists. Now, this is speculation. I don't know for certain. I studied this topic once. I'm surprised I'm remembering as much as I am about it. But it is something to consider. Now, I'm trying to keep myself at a specific time, so let's move on to middle adulthood. At this point, you've generated exactly who you are and morals for yourself. However... 
What about balance? Life, goal, balances. Well, middle adulthood creates a stage considered generativity versus stagnation. At this point in life, all you're really trying to do is balance out a livelihood. You're probably already, at this point in life, most people are usually already married, um, or at least with a significant other. They're, if they're not married, for the most part, I've noticed that a lot of people have a tendency to be raising kids at this point. They're, they are building a stronghold for their own mindset to be able to live whatever way it is the generativity versus stagnation stage kind of gives off the idea that you need to balance yourself out to be able to provide for yourself for the future and as tough as it can be for some people I'm one of them at times it can also be at the same time pretty easy going it's kind of one of those things for me, in my eyes. Now, it can also be the reverse. It could be neither, it could be both, or it could be one or the other. For me, it's a little bit of both. Either way, I would say that's probably the best way to sum up middle adulthood. But there is one more phase. One that you don't see very often unless you're talking about a different topic that this channel has already brought up. And that last stage is ego integrity versus despair through maturity. Now, from what I've noticed, this stage more has, when it comes to reflection off of people, it has more to do with the idea that how people respond to things. It's another kind of moral thing, I guess you could say. This is how I was taught it, and this is how I still look at it. This may not be 100% accurate, but it definitely is enough so to where you can at least present it that way. Whenever I see this particular stage, I always think of how people respond to the five stages of grief, or seven stages of grief. It really depends on you and the way your life is going. Now, for those who don't know the difference, five is the stages of grief towards the loss, the death of a loved one or someone you care about. The seven stages one is usually during a breakup or a divorce or the other. That one is usually approached with the most unintentional responses, I guess you could say. In the long haul, there's a lot to it. Probably, that's one of the, that's the only one, I would say, of the eight stages that kind of deserve its own video, just because I feel like I've already ta half talked about this anyway in a different video, so I'm not going to bring it up again. However, I will say this, to see how this go through the negative uh, side effects of the maturity stage is honestly kind of depressing to see, in my opinion. But I don't know, that's me personally. This is kind of where, now my mindset, what is my mindset overall about the stages of psychosocial development? Well. I was originally, I'll say this, I was originally going to make this a history talk video, but if I did that, I would have had to talk about Eric Erickson himself, the man who came up with this. But honestly, outside of the stages themselves, that's all I know about this guy. I don't know very much, and I'd have to do a lot of research. Maybe on a future date I will, because this guy does pique my interest quite a bit, actually. The stages themselves are very intriguing to think about because they basically describe all the morals of life and how they're developed each and every one of them which makes sense since you know it's psychosocial development it's talking about which kind of corns around that i don't know my thoughts on the matter of these kind of things can be very intriguing 
I find them very informative and very helpful as well because of the fact that this kind of stuff, well, when you come across individuals that you don't know IRL, you can either judge them for what they are or you can accept them. This, uh, how does this have anything to do with it? It's more the matter of your own personal approach. The stages of psychosocial development is one of the major causes, or the outcomes of each every stage is kind of one of the major causes of when people are able to get along and when they're not. It's why Amber, the, the fact that Amber and I see a lot of these stages eye to eye is one of the major reasons why she and I started getting along so well and so quickly. It's usually the same concept for any friend I normally make and keep, which is extremely rare for me, but it is that concept, which I find very, very, very intriguing. Um, it's kind of weird, though, to think about for me again. Infancy, the infancy stage, I... It's... It, for me, it's hard to judge that aspect because that trust versus mistrust, you break my trust, it's extremely hard to earn it back. Which is the case for most, but it's also the reverse. Once you gain my trust, it's extremely hard to break it. That part, for most people, from what I've noticed, is not the same. Now, I don't know if it's the case of this or not, but I do find it interesting how many people are different on that particular one. In early childhood, well, and the preschool ones, the ones that involve like decision-making and the response to the outcome of that choice, we're all, the, we're all different. And it's very intriguing to think about, but at the same time, what would we do? It's, we're all different. Well, I mean, if we think one way and someone else thinks differently, oh well. Just don't argue about it because that won't get anywhere good. Industry versus inferiority. Well, let's put it this way. When this one gets developed, this is kind of where you find people like Karens. Or when you find, like, very stingy people. If people become stingy in the future, it's probably because of this particular stage. It's something I've noticed, and every individual who ends up going through that stage in a negative manner ends up coming out negative, or at least at first. I know some people who actually have fallen under this category, but I'm not going to talk about them because it is not my place. And then adolescence comes in. If you name a one person, if you try to name one person who hasn't gone through this stage at some point in their life, you're lying. Everybody goes through some kind of identity crisis or role confusion. If you know you're what you are by the time you reach high school, then you're set for life way before you even prepped for it. Which can be a problem, but at the same time, not. I didn't know the kind of person I was. Again, I said this earlier. I didn't know what kind of person I was until about five years prior to this recording. Maybe a little bit less. But because of going through that little role confusion section for me, it benefited my future and it benefited how I can look at things. It helped me relate to other people. And then there's the intimacy versus isolation and the generativity versus stagnation, which again, moral building and life building. We all have all of it we have to go through. All of us approach it differently. What are we going to do? Outside of what we can do, there really is nothing we can... That, that's it, really. And then, ego integrity versus despair. We all lose people. And it's sad. It's kind of why I started planning on making videos once every year to help lift other spirits on this front. Which, expect that video in a couple of weeks. Ugh, next month's going to be a busy... A month after this particular video... Um, it's going to be so freaking busy for me. And for Pink Fox as well. We're going to be some pretty busy bees out there. But, you know what? I don't know. I, I digress. Everybody goes through these kind of stages. Every one of these stages. 
all of us experience some kind of negative result and all of us experience positive ones. Now, whichever ones you experience more really determines on how your life lays out. But I do appreciate the fact that the stages of psychosocial development was created because in that sense, it made it a lot easier to understand and relate. But these are just kind of my thoughts on the matter. Also, apologies for the random heavy inward outward breathing. I feel like I have hiccups, but nothing's happening. What are your guys' thoughts on this particular, um, you know, theory? Let me know in the comments below. Do you, if you guys have anything else that you'd like me to talk about, let me know down there as well. Want to check out any other discussion or anti videos that I've talked about on this channel? Go to the link on the side of my head. Or if that doesn't float your boat quite, why not check out the other link, where YouTube will give you an idea of something you might enjoy. If that's not quite it, why not check out the channel itself, where you'll find over a thousand videos at this point. In the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thank you guys once again for watching this video, and I hope to see all of you in another. Bye for now.